G'day guys and welcome to G-Man Specs. Today we're going to take a look at women or rationalising what a situationship is and uh, for you guys out there who have never heard the term, I guess they're going to explain what it is for us. So guys, enjoy the show and let's get stuck in. Okay, guys, if you don't know the difference between situationships, talking stages, and being exclusive, then let me explain. Today, I'm going to tell you the biggest signs that you are in a situationship. Okay, so first things first, what even is a situationship? It's kind of what it sounds like. It's not a relationship. It's like a situation you're in with a girl or a guy. Hence the word situationship. The first sign that you're in one is that it's low-key toxic. You guys are constantly bantering. And there's just sprinkles of toxicity in there. Number two. As in, girls don't really banter that much. Well, so guys not giving a shit. So you got Bryce, you got Steve-O. Guys, you just throw out banter, give them backhanded compliments. Couldn't give two stuffs if they stick around or not, guys. It's just the way it, it rolls. Wouldn't call it toxic. It's just the guy not pandering. Number two, it's inconsistent. One day they love you, the next they're blocking you. This is the difference between situationships and talking stages because talking stages are more consistent. Okay, number three. You so, so they block you one day, they love you the next day. I don't understand that. More or less, when a guy blocks a chick, um, there's probably two reasons. One, you've been really obnoxious and annoying. It takes quite a bit for a guy to block a chick too. He's probably got a missus or something like that, and you're just a side piece, and he was just trying to slam slam you up guts. He was talking to you. You either came through with the goods um, or you didn't, but whatever, the time ran out on it, and he's blocked you, right? Or he's juggling girls. He doesn't want other girls to find out about you. Blocked you. That's what's happened here. You guys have this magnetic pull with one another, and you get jealous when they talk to other people. But, like, you're not exclusive. You get jealous if they talk to other girls or guys, but it's like not your place to be jealous, so you can't even say anything. If you are two out of three of these things, you are in a situationship. If you want to turn a situationship into an actual relationship, though, then stay tuned because... Oh, yeah, because coming from a dating coach who doesn't have a boyfriend or, or is, isn't married or anything like that, here we go. She's going to stay tuned, guys, with her wealth of experience. She's probably 20, 21. Who knows how old she is? But what's all this stuff, you know, situationship? I only heard that term, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just too fucking old, mate. But, like, I, I've only heard that term over the last sort of few years. I mean, what's a situationship? It's you get, you're having casual sex. That's it. You know, there isn't anything more around that, all right? And it's either a guy or a girl, because it happens. Like, girls will do it too. Girls will string guys along um, for that sort of thing. Like, they will have sex. They will strung guys along too. They do do it. There's a certain type of girl, but guys out there who womanize, you'll come across them and you can identify them pretty quickly. Um, but, yeah, I don't understand the confusion. You know, at the end of the day, if someone likes you, male or female, they'll let it be known. Um, people are pretty simple when you strip it all back, guys. Now, I thought this one was hilarious. No, hang on. I want to do one more thing, right, before I went, kept going. You know, I always show you the likes. So this is 182,000 likes, guys. That's why I've left that a bit visible there on the right-hand side for you. Um, you can see her, whatever. You can find them anyway, right? So, But don't go over there and start talking shit. But that's the um, 182,000 likes. So it just goes to show you that a lot of people are partaking in these such things. I think there's nothing wrong with it, but don't complain about it. That's all. So this video I thought was great. And the reason why is a woman's more or less writing a song about a Bricey. Um, it's hilarious. Uh, it's, it's just you just got to listen to the to the lyrics, and if you've done this sort of thing before, you're like, yeah, that was basically me. Um, so I will play it for you guys. And I tell you what, no shade at her. I think she's actually really good. Maybe she should uh, focus on songwriting, um, a musical because right, maybe she could do better instead of trying to do or venting about boys on TikTok. She could make something a bit more out of herself with her time. You know that point in the situationship that you reach where you're like, we either have to do something about this or we have to walk away from it. I've got a boy, but he isn't my boyfriend. <laughs> Though he says all the things that a boyfriend would say. Rossi classic. Calls me at night, texts me. Do all the 
tell him I miss him, I tell him I want him He puts me through things a girlfriend goes through Poor you And I'm lying to myself Saying I won't get hurt this time This time <laughs> this is legit, it's not a joke. Anyway, that's it. She keeps repeating. I thought that was quite good. She's quite talented, so I'll give props where they're due, guys. But, you know, this this chick's got the look of her, of brassy bait, nose ring, a bit disheveled. She's got the crack makeup around the eyes. You know, I'm sure she's not doing those sort of things, but that's the look that she's giving off. But it, it just goes to show you the pains and the ways that they'll twist them inside and out for a small percentage of guys. The guy that she's writing this song about doesn't give two shits about it. Doesn't even really know. Doesn't even know her surname. Doesn't know what she even does. Like Bryce, he doesn't even know what she does. He doesn't care. He doesn't listen, right? He does what he does. He does what he has to do. He says what he has to say to keep him on the merry-go-round as long as possible. And eventually, they come off the merry-go-round. They can't deal with the uncertainty anymore. And this is a perfect example uh, of that. You know, uh, guys who've been out womanizing and have um, been pantsmen, so to speak. I saw someone put in my comments. He's a legendary pantsman i like the i like that it's like it's like the um the kingsman you're a gentleman you're a gentleman womanizer but uh guys if you've done it put in the comments like they, they, some of the stuff i've had girls write songs for me guys uh years ago i had a girl who was a singer songwriter putting stuff up on uh whatsapp etc so it's really uh it's really interesting what they uh will do if they do like you that much um and yeah they sort of simp for guys, but a small percentage of them. All right, guys, so halfway through, if you're enjoying the show, um, yeah, please sub to the channel, be part of the growth, and more importantly, guys, just watch through to the end uh, and comment. It boosts the algo, and it also helps get me out there to more people uh, and more guys that can uh, join the um, the viewership and, and contribute men's experiences um, with our community that we're building. All right, let's get on to the back half, boys. Here we go. Let's get some tips. In honor of it being peak mating season, I'm going to share with you lessons I've learned through my situationships so that you don't have to learn them the hard way like I did. The first situationship I was in was with a guy that was very upfront and told me that he was not looking for a relationship and told me that I could either walk away or stay. I was really enjoying our time together so I told him that I wasn't looking for a boyfriend, which was a lie, and that I was fine with the way things were because I was- So I'll tell you one thing guys, that's a line that I always used to use and it's ethical womanizing, right? That's when I say be ethical, say that. Give the person the opportunity to stay or go so you know things can always turn into something but you don't give up an upfront commitment or surety on an outcome that you don't know what's going to happen or not a lot of girls are pushed for that right so i would always say that yep see what happens see what happens going with the flow all that standard shit you know the sort of airy fairy stuff that can be true because bryce's can get girlfriends guys they just have to. They, uh, Bryce, he knows a good girl when he meets one. He's he, he's been with many women. He goes out with many women. He gets rid of most of them. But there will be one who will stand out from time to time, and he'll go out with them. So that is true. So guys, say uh, don't blatantly lie because you end up like Steve O on Facebook page, right? So be open about it. But watch here how they rationalise, um, more or less, the guy not giving a shit at all, right? Because guys who do get lots of girls and. Like, especially a girl, he might not be at the top of his list. Like, guy's got a rotation. He's not his favorite one. A guy's always got a favorite one or two if they do have a rotation. And you get some that you do. Like It's like, you know, one's not available, the other one's not available, the other one's not available. You go down the list, and the ones down the bottom of the list, you really give them nothing. And they're the ones that, that care the most. They're the ones that get worked up the most. And I think it's probably this chick. So let's... Oh, I'm not going to stop this video now. I just wanted to give you that preamble. And let's watch it. 
because I would rather fool myself into thinking that I was fine with it than be alone. As I kept seeing him, obviously I got really attached and I would get so anxious if I didn't hear from him or see him. So I would bend over backwards for him, put in so much effort, and I even revolved my schedule around him. Like I remember I wouldn't make plans with my friends in case he texted me to hang out. Like I cannot believe I was that girl. While he made zero effort because as he said from the beginning, he was not looking to invest in a relationship. So so when a guy tells you he's not looking for a relationship, fucking believe him. So then after yeah. three months of that, he ghosted me. Oh, but that's not even the worst part because half a year later, I went back to him <laughs> because I thought, oh, it'll be different this time. And what do you know? It was worse the second time. <laughs> so the lessons here are one, he will never eventually fall in love with you no matter how long you stick around. True. Nothing you say or do will be able to change his mind. Yep. Also, why would you even want to be with someone who you have to wait around for them to recognize how valuable you are? Exactly. Two, some men are straight up trash and should not be recycled or reused, especially if they don't even ask for a second chance. Like I went running back to him being like- So hang on, hang on, hang on. So he's trash. Yeah, I think actually she might be the trash in this occasion because he's discarded her. Generally people discard cra trash, they don't chase after trash. So I don't know where she's getting that from. You know, generally women will call all men trash when they're angry. Bryce, Steve-O, they haven't got him what they wanted. He gave him a little bit of a taste, you know, a little bit of the dopamine, and then he backed off, and uh, it's not a good feeling. I know there are guys out there who have been with girls. Girls do the same thing. If not, they do it worse. They get emotionally involved with guys. Guys fall in love with them, you know, hoping that one day she will see that he's more than just a friend, you know, and they'll hang around for years and years and years, not two months or a week, all right? So... It happens to everybody. These are the ones who just complain about it. Guys just cop it, I guess, and then um, have a really bad time. Like, hey, you didn't ask for one, but here's a second chance. Don't be like me. Three, we tend to run back to someone when we're too impatient for the better thing to come along. But if you trust that it always gets better, then it will. And it's always better to be alone than be with someone that makes you feel alone. Four, be mm. really honest with yourself what it is that you really want. So if you really want a boyfriend, then that's fine. But if a guy tells you that he's not looking for a girlfriend, then he's not your guy. Don't make a square fit into a circle hole. Is that the saying? You know what I mean. So often we settle for less to make what's available in front of us work because we're so afraid we're not going to be able to find the next one. But when you do that, not only are you in a lack mentality, you're also signaling to the universe that you don't believe that you deserve something better. Okay, I have more to say, but it won't fit here. So I need to make a- Yeah, yeah, more rubbish. But more or less, like she said a point that actually that um I probably, I probably have talked about this buried in my other videos, guys. Check them out. I've got a bit of a back catalog on the channel, various playlists, etc. But she said something. I'm looking for a boyfriend or I want a boyfriend. It doesn't, some of these girls, it doesn't matter who it is. Like, it doesn't matter if it's Mr. Perfect. They hope it's Mr. Perfect, but eventually over time, they do drop the standards a little bit to Mr. Just About Good Enough. It isn't about the man. It isn't about the one guy that they've met and they're patient for something to develop, they'll say to you straight up, I want a boyfriend. And to me, that's the female equivalent of a guy saying, suck my dick. Like, yeah, it couldn't be anything more direct and upfront um, and pretty surface level thing to say to somebody to put them off because women pushing for relationships without even knowing you um, or, or, or or putting it on the radar, a relationship, first date, second date, you know, guys, you know, it's like you're on dates on Bumble and Tinder and all that. Biggest turn off ever. Anyway, let's watch the last clip. I won't talk, I promise, through the last one. And this is an Aussie chick. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's uh, it's really telling uh, some of the stuff that they say because they're just telling themselves the whole time. And there's nothing wrong with doing what you're doing, but don't complain about it. I don't know if you're in a situation, Jip, though. I'm going to give you some pointers, some things that might give you some guidance to help you assess your situation. The first sign that you're in a situation, Chip, is that there is no label attached to it. There's no <laughs> commitment, and I like to call it as sitting in limbo. The second sign is that the other party the person you're in the situation ship with is unable to commit to you. The next way that you'll be able to spot if you're in a situation ship kind of ties into that, but the person has verbatim said to you with their mouth that they are going with the flow, that they are having fun, yep. and they just want to see how things go. The next sign is that when you're with them, you're having fun, but the second you are not with them and when you're alone, you're confused 
you're uneasy, you're unsure. And then the Exciting. last sign is that it's surface level. There'll be no introduction to friends. There'll be no introduction to family. You never really get integrated into that deeper layer of their life. That's one thing I'm going to make a video about, guys, how women integrate and bury themselves into a man's life because it is something that I've noticed is they'll really try and push for an introduction to your friends, especially your family. They want to meet your mom, your dad, your brother. They want to come to the family barbecue sort of as soon as possible. They want to entrench themselves. And guys say that as an as, as, as a innocent behavior. Hey, that's that's really endearing, mate. That's really endearing that this, this girl wants to come meet my mom and dad. But they just bury themselves in with ticks because they're trying to get a boyfriend, right? That's the reality of it, guys. You've got to say it's a strategy. It's a strategy for getting more involved in your life so it's harder for you... <coughs> Sorry, to cut the cord. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Fucking hell, got a bit worked up there. But a um, really good friend of mine, guys, um, he does this all the time. Does it all the time. He'll have a girlfriend for a month and he's in introducing him to his mum. And then and then the girl's gone the next week or two weeks later or whatever, or a month later. And everyone's asking him questions. Where is she? What happened? Blah, blah, blah. So he has to go through this bullshit every single time. He's probably done it four or five times. I've seen a pattern with him. As he gets all these women that he... <clears throat> most likely things aren't going to work out with, but they're pushing to meet his parents, his friends, and all of that. I find it strange. I find it strange, guys. Because the reality is, they meet your family, your friends. At some point down the line, they fucking hate all your mates, and they hate your parents. So <laughs> I've never really understood that. And there was another point... This is why guys hide off, hold off, ladies. If there any women watching or guys, put in your comments if you agree with me or not. Guys who have been especially married and divorced and they're out dating, they try and keep you on the hamster wheel for as long as possible because they know at the end of the day they're probably, well, what's their reward for committing and doing all those things? A lot of pain and a lot of cost through divorces and, and, and financial settlements down the line. So it's like, what are you actually getting for, for playing uh, the woman's game? You're not getting a lot so guys, just do whatever you want. Don't let them um, shame you or anything like that. And yeah, be careful out there, boys. And as I said, see you in the next one, guys. And thank you for watching all the way through.